All right, number 178 is the Aka Elephant Mask by the Bamalik from Cameroon, 19th, 20th century. And then this is a lot of the same materials that we've been seeing repeated in our, in our African artworks, except this one includes beads. So beads is very important to this piece. If you don't remember any material, remember the beads, okay? All right, so I want you to draw a little family tree. I'm a very visual person. This kind of helps me um, visualize what I'm talking about here. So go ahead and write on the top, like Bamalik people. And then the Bamalik people would have individual kingdoms within their group of people. I don't know how many, I just made three. But they would branch out into individual kingdoms. Each kingdom had a king. So another word for a king is a fawn. So you can write fawn or you can write king or you can write both. So each kingdom had a king. And then the next in line, like the upper, upper class to the fawn is the Kuosi. So go ahead and write how it would branch out to the Kuosi. So what that means is next after the king is this high ranking social class called Kuosi. Kuosi are the only ones that are allowed to wear the Aka elephant masks. Kind of reminds me with the Bundu mask and there's the secret Sende society. This is also kind of like a separate society, the Kuosi society. All right, we're gonna watch a little bit of this Khan Academy clip. We're in the Brooklyn Museum looking at this magnificent beaded mask. This mask is covered in beads. It was danced by the members of the Elephant Society, the Kuosi Society, in the Bamalike Kingdom of Cameroon. Cameroon is a country in Central Africa, but we're seeing this object hermetically sealed within plexiglass in a museum, completely divorced from the way that it would have been used and understood in its original context. This was a masquerade, which involved not just a mask, but a costume, performers, musicians, and attendants to bring this mask to life, to do what it was really supposed to do in terms of honoring the king and bringing about social harmony. So we should not be seeing it frozen, hung, as if it was just a piece of cloth. This object was obviously collected and has now a second life in this museum space. It's very hard for us to recontextualize its original use, but we know from photographs that the Bamalike Society would wear these with a red feather headdress, a leopard skin pelt, and a full body costume. The leopard and the elephant were symbols of rule and powerful symbols for the fawn. The fawn was a divine king who could transform into the elephant, and the leopard was thought to be an animal that could transform into a human. So we have that connection between divine rule and the essence of these powerful animals. So the Bamalike that would have worn this would have been court officials, title holders, warriors, people that held themselves great power, and in their association with the leopard and with the elephant would have expressed the power of the king, and in a sense, the political stability of that hierarchical order. The Bamalike king, the fawn, allowed this society, and only this one, to dance the elephant mask and to wear leopard skin. They were entrusted with these symbols of authority and power. The main form in this beaded piece is the isosceles triangle, which relates to the patterning on the body of the leopard. Highly stylized, though, as the entire mask is. It's dazzling and it has a kind of optical quality that is full of energy and dynamism. And imagine when it's worn and danced and performed, it would be incredibly dynamic with all of these various materials and colors and shapes all brought together to suggest the power of that king. And in Cameroon today, the Bamalike still perform this ritual now annually, but instead of warriors performing it, these are powerful members of the society. All right, so some things they said about the function. This is meant to honor the king. This is meant to bring about social harmony. This has a lot to do with different social classes and hierarchy, right? You have the king, and then you have this Kuosi society, and then you have the lower class. So part of this dance and this ritual is to keep that lower class in that lower class. It's supposed to intimidate them. Um, overall, it represents the wealth and the leadership of the fawn. So how does, looking at the materials, how can materials be or represent a symbol of power and wealth, 
right? I feel like we talked about this. If you look at the feather headdress, you can relate that to the Pacific Ahuula cape or the Aztec feather headdress. Um, you can relate these beads easily back to the bandolier bag from the Indigenous American unit. So glass beads are imported, right? It's a good brought in from Venice and they're actually used as currency. So imagine just making a full on costume for this upper class society out of money and for then parading that around. So that's going to exude power. The king or the fawn controlled the use of these beads. <laughs> so you'd have to have permission to use them. The red feathers in the headdress, this is a rare expensive material, therefore that equals power. And then like you saw in that video, they have a giant leopard skin on their back. And then they're wearing a beaded tunic and they have on bells and rattles. <laughs> okay, here's just some more contextual pictures to see them being used. All right, and then at the Nelson, so I don't know if it talked about in the video, I think it did, <clears throat> the reason for the elephant and the leopard animals, those are those represent the king um, because they are associated with power and authority of the king. This is a composite, which means combining things together. It's combining the leopard and the elephant. And then if you go to the Nelson in the African gallery, this is what we have from Cameroon, which you can easily relate to the elephant mask because this is covered in beads. It has very similar geometric patterns and it is a throne. And that is all.